So quantum numbers are really useful whenever we're studying chemical reactions, and that chart we figured out in the last tutorial made it really easy to follow along, but there's even a better tool, and that's this thing right here called the Energy Level Diagram. Now the Energy Level Diagram allows us to clearly visualize the electrons on an atom. So I know I probably don't even have to explain this, but I will since, you know, I'm doing a tutorial and it's kind of my job to explain things. One and two are just different energy levels, and these dashes represent those different orbitals, or pretty much the different zones where electrons can orbit. And remember, for each orbital, you can have two electrons, one spinning clockwise and another spinning counterclockwise. So each of these dashes can hold two electrons, and we just represent those with an up arrow and a down arrow to represent clockwise and counterclockwise. However, before we start plopping arrows and electrons down on these orbitals, we need to follow a couple rules. Now the rules of the game is this. Number one, you need to fill up the lowest vacant energy level before moving on to the next one. For example, you need to fill up 1s before you move on to 2s, and you need to fill up 2s before you move on to 2p. Simple enough. However, you may be thinking, okay, this makes sense with 1 and 2, but whenever we get to the higher energy levels like 3, 4, and 5, there's a really weird method in order to fill the lowest vacant energy levels, and I'm going to show it to you right now. So 1 and 2 are simple, and you may be thinking, okay, I'm going to fill up all my 1s, then all my 2s, and then I probably fill up all my 3s before I move on to my 4s, and I fill up all my 4s before I move on to my 5s. Makes sense, right? but that isn't the way it works. So here's how it really works. You fill up all your 1s, and then you go to 2s. Once you fill up 1s, you fill up 2s. And then you go to 2p. From 2p, you fill up 3s. Now from 3p, you fill up 4s. And then you go 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 4f, 5D. So I know this is really weird and it wouldn't make a lot more sense if you just went 1, 2, 3, but hey, I didn't make up this method, that's just the way it works. You're going to have to take it up with whoever invented electrons in the atom, you know, take it up with them, not my prob, this is my job. There's some saying like that, I stole it from the office, but not my job, not my prob, is that what it is? I don't know, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue with the tutorial, I don't know what I'm talking about. So anyways, the next rule is this, it's called Hund's rule, H-U-N-D, this dude came up with another rule. He says that whenever there is more than one orbital, basically, whenever there is more than one tilt, in the example of 2P, electrons fill each one until they're all taken, and once they're all taken, then they start pairing up with each other. So pretty much electrons are greedy. They don't pair up with each other unless they absolutely need to. Makes sense? So let me go ahead and change my opacity, fix my colors, and in this tutorial, or this game, we're gonna play with the element fluorine. Now, I know I didn't cover the elements in the periodic table, but fluorine has nine electrons in it. So let's go ahead and start plopping these electrons in the nucleus. So all the protons and neutrons are chilling out here in the nucleus. Time to plop some electrons on here. The first electron goes on 1s, and we'll just represent that with an up arrow. The second electron, before it can move to 2s, it has to fill up 1s. So we'll go ahead and we'll represent that with a down arrow. Now whenever we have an up arrow and a down arrow, we have two electrons at the same level, or in the same orbital, spinning in different directions, that's called spin pairing. It's just a technical term, but you know, I thought I'd throw it out there, just a little tidbit of information. So the first two electrons go on 1s. The next two spin pair on 2s. Now once those are filled up, we can move to 2p. Now we have four of the nine electrons taken care of, we have five to go. So how they go on 2p is this. They start filling up, one at a time. And once all those orbitals are filled up, they say, okay, is this room taken? Yup, someone already in there. Is this room taken? Yup, sorry, in, someone already in there. Is this room taken? Yup, someone already in there. Okay, now I guess I need a roommate. So they go and they start spin pairing. So basically, 
what we're doing is we're following a Hund's rule that says whenever there is more than one tilt, the electrons fill up until they're all taken, and only if they need to, then they start pairing up. So that is Hund's rule right there. And again, the first rule is we need to fill up 1s before we move to 2s, and we need to make sure 2s is filled before we move to 2p. So that is how the electrons would go. One right here, then one right here, then this one, then this one, and then they would fill these ones up one at a time until they are all filled, and then they start pairing up. So that is basically how you place electrons on an atom and whenever we're looking at chemical reactions it's going to make a lot more sense because we talk about well I'll talk about valence electrons probably in the next tutorial but it makes a lot more sense whenever you can visually see the electrons on an atom so you may be thinking alright so you're telling me that any time I want to study a chemical reaction I need to draw this big diagram that's gonna suck and that's gonna take a lot of time well thankfully chemists and scientists are really lazy and they came up with even a better way to write these down and if you're thinking this is going to take a whole nother tutorial then you are wrong check this out I probably don't even need to explain this but I will what you do is you write the notation 1s and then you write how many electrons are in that level 2 2s and I'm filling this out for fluorine which has 9 electrons 2s2 two and 2 P, one, two, what is it, five. So pretty much this is the notation and it's called the electron configuration. So I don't even know if you guys can see that. I'll write it again down here. I don't know if the video is cutting that off. But pretty much what you do is you write the notation for each one, like we did in the last tutorial on the chart, and you write how many electrons are in that orbital. So 1s2, 2s2, 2 P5 is the electron configuration for fluorine and if you want to double check you just go ahead and check the index 5 plus 2 plus 2 equals 9 and that's how many electrons are in fluorine so we're good to go so that's a simpler way and that's how I'm probably going to be writing the electron configuration for the rest of these tutorials so no more drawing graphs no more doing anything like that there you go so finally, finally, that's all we have to cover with the quantum mechanical model. I think that's it. I'm pretty sure in the next tutorial we can finally move on to something more interesting. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.